This is ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. I guess the big question is, how much money we put in this place before we say enough is enough? Nobody wants to raise taxes, but what do you do about conditions at Firehouse 1 in Venice? A hole in the roof, mold. What's the plan? Where's the money? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohen, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. More on Venice Fire Station number one in a moment, but first, our top seven stories at 7. And we begin tonight with the continuing efforts to clean up the damage from Tropical Storm Emily. Manatee County took it on the chin. The DeSoto National Memorial remains closed because of falling debris, tree limbs, and tidal surge. The tropical storm spawned a tornado in northwest Bradenton near the memorial. We were hit very hard by Tropical Storm Emily. Uh, we had upwards of 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts that went through the park and possibly even a mini cyclone. Um, that blew down lots of different types of debris, branches, actually, and even fell several trees in and around our headquarters and visitor center area, and as well as our park trails. Rangers say along with the debris, there's also flooding at the park. Crews from Canaveral National Seashore are at the park today and tomorrow to help remove the debris. A Bradenton man is being charged with possession of child pornography after an investigation that took months. Detectives with the Manatee County Sheriff's Office began investigating Timothy Shoemaker in December on suspicion of transmitting child pornography on the internet. A search of Shoemaker's computer found files containing large amounts of child pornography. Shoemaker is being charged with 11 counts related to transmission of child pornography. There is a new soldier in the fight against citrus greening in Florida. The Florida Department of Agriculture is providing residents with wasps that by nature the hunt the invasive insect killing citrus trees. The state already provides more than a million wasps each year to commercial growers, but this is the first time homeowners are eligible to receive them. A traffic stop turns into a police chafe and ends with an arrest. 61-year-old Isa Allian is being charged with aggravated battery and stalking. Deputies say they attempted to stop him in a business parking lot while picking up a woman who was waiting for him, but he sped off. Deputies chased him along Weber Street in Sarasota. He eventually stopped in the neighborhood on Toxford Drive. When I peeked out through the drapes, I saw about a dozen police cars with all their lights flashing straight down my street. When I analyzed the situation, it looked like that car could have come right through my bedroom and hit me. Allian is also charged with fleeing to elude officers. His passenger was released. With school starting in the next couple of weeks, time to start thinking about school supplies. Florida's back-to-school sales tax holiday begins Friday and runs through Sunday. No sales tax on clothes, footwear, backpacks costing $60 or less, school supplies costing $15 or less, and personal computers up to $750. There are tens and tens of thousands of retailers in the state that benefit from this. There are other retailers that can piggyback on it and, and have promotions in conjunction with it. That's what I would do if, a re, if I were a retailer. Um, when you consider technology, when you consider clothing, supplies, that's a large number of retailers that will be eligible. We're excited about the weekend. We know they are too, and we're looking forward to it. Miller says the tax holiday will save Florida families $39 million. So what is in the name change? The Consortium of Colleges on the Creative Coast is changing its name to Cross College Alliance. It's a collaboration of Sarasota Manatee Colleges and Universities. It is an effort to partner and share resources. The name change comes as the Alliance works to make Suncoast more college friendly for students. We like to see ourselves as the campus of, of the Cross College Alliance. And so we do a number of programs that are directly uh, targeted at the college age community here because we want them to feel a sense of community and we also we want them to stay. Cross College Alliance started two years ago and includes six colleges in Sarasota and Manatee counties as well as St. Petersburg College. A golf course in Northport is under new ownership. Sable Trace Golf Course closed suddenly in May 2015. The new owner is Sam Rogers, a well-known builder on the Sun Coast. Roger has built communities in Grand Parisio in Venice and Greyhawk Landing in Bradenton. It is unknown if the property will continue to be a golf course. And Bob, the rain, the rain, the rain. Yeah, it just keeps coming, doesn't it, Alan? 
Uh, we've had some showers and storms around uh, this afternoon, mainly though. This morning, a lot of sunshine. Temperatures still managed to get into the upper 80s to near 90 degrees, but the humidity has been so high, it was actually feeling a lot warmer than that, around 100 degrees uh, by midday. Uh, rain and rain and rain. More out there, too. Alan, get a look at this uh, radar review over the last couple of hours showing a steady stream of moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. Good news is it doesn't appear that we're going to see anything develop like we saw with Emily at this time. The Hurricane Center had been watching an area, giving about a 10% chance of developing. Today they dropped that to zero, and so they're not even following it anymore. It's just a line of low pressure. You have to have a circulation around a center in order for it to become tropical. We don't see that, but we do see is showers and storms every once in a while popping up. So look for hit or miss showers through this evening. Some areas will remain dry, but others getting the rain. Like we're seeing near Port Charlotte heading off toward Northport. Inglewood getting a pretty good downpour right now. Venice has had their rain, and so has Osprey but not much right now. But notice in the last frame there, more rain developing in the Gulf and pushing in our general direction. So we can expect that uh, through this evening. Uh, near Minnesota, stretching down to Inglewood, a little light shower there, but some heavier storms with some lightning about 70 miles west-southwest of Venice and Inglewood pushing off to the northeast. And then get a look at this, a large area of some heavier rainfall in the Gulf of Mexico there. That's associated with that trough of low pressure, a little disturbance in the atmosphere. So this isn't going away anytime soon. You can see it's backed up all the way toward Louisiana and into Texas. Uh, there are advisories in effect for uh, rip currents. And if you're caught in one, yell for help, swim parallel to the coast, uh, get out of the rip current, obviously, and then eventually swim back to the beach. And also remember to swim where a lifeguard is located to uh, keep an eye on you. Always good advice. That's right. Thanks a lot, right. Bob. And still to come, Fire Station 1 in Venice is literally falling apart. We'll show you how bad it is and what the city intends to do after the break. About every three minutes in America, someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer. Light the Night brings together survivors and supporters to bring light to the darkness of cancer and to help fund life-saving research. Our goal is a world without blood cancers, and we're lighting the path to cures. The discoveries made in blood cancer research have led to breakthrough treatments for many cancers and other serious diseases. Help defeat the darkness of cancer. Join Light the Night today. So you've decided to go to college. That's cool. So pop quiz, which is a better way to earn your degree? Commute to college and fill your gas tank, get stuck in traffic, drive in bad weather, try to find a parking space, walk a half mile to class, or learn online at Independence University. You don't go to college, college goes to you. That's Independence. That's Independence University. And all your supplies, including a brand new laptop and tablet, are included with tuition. Independence U for an independent you. Call 1 800 671 4817. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. My name is Luke Perry and I am one million strong. I'm in the fight against colorectal cancer because I believe we can win it. Colon and rectal cancers are the second leading cause of cancer deaths among men and women in the U.S. Colon cancer is preventable. Know the risk factors and make sure to get screened. There are simple take-home options available. Take control of your health. Screening for colon cancer isn't embarrassing. It can be life-saving. To find out more about your options, visit fightcrc.org. ABC7, your official Florida lottery station for the Sun Coast. We want our local governments to be lean and efficient, and a lot of us chafe at the thought of higher taxes. But fire station number one in Venice is falling apart. It has been for years, and as Christopher Brantley reports, there's no money to fix it. Absolutely, and this debacle has been going on for a long while. 
We've covered it for years, and each time we go to the station, there seems to be another problem waiting to be fixed. This hole in the roof is the prime example of the problems at Fire Station 1. It was there a few years ago when we first visited. It was there a couple weeks ago when we last visited. I guess the big question is, how much money we put in this place before we say enough is enough? That's the big question on everyone's mind. When is enough enough? While city leaders effort coming up with an answer, the firefighters and paramedics work around the issues. I just talked to a young lady here and uh, she asked for an air quality study because the AC units are kicking out dust. Part of those problems, says Venice City Councilman Bob Daniels, could come from a faulty AC system. It's got mold, the AC units are pretty well shot, the air quality is bad inside. If you look in the back, there's metal doors that are rusted. In fact, those doors aren't doors anymore. They're all just casually leaning against the department's storage building, not really connected to anything. Daniels has been an advocate for rebuilding the station for some time. It's really hard to find anyone who disagrees. But even harder still to find is the money to do the rebuilding. I, I think we need to get this high on the agenda and get it replaced. But here's the thing. If the city can find the money to rebuild the station, they'll have to decide where to build it. Should it be built in the heart of downtown Venice? Or should it be built elsewhere? The department's call logs might indicate where the firehouse should go. Right now, there is a response time from that station. A determination must be made about where the majority of those calls come from and if it is right to keep the station where it is. And while all of that is debated, Public Works Director John Veneziano says the building's roof, among other things, won't last long. Yeah, it's not going to last much longer. It's going to, you know, if, if we don't uh, remove the building altogether, build a new one, we're, it's going to need a complete, you know, re-roofing. In next year's budget, city leaders agreed to set aside $1 million towards emergency repairs in the department. That would include Fire Station 1. A building assessment has been conducted by an outside group hired by the city. Their recommendation will come soon. The patchwork of repairs on the building do open up the risk of causing even more damage. Just at a point where it's so old, you know, you fix it, you patch it while you're up there, you put a little too ma much weight somewhere, yeah, you'll, cr you'll make another hole in it. Now, virtually everyone agrees the roof is a strong gust away from having a catastrophic problem. Not only could first responders be under it if that happened, but well over one and a half million dollars in fire trucks could also be damaged. Christopher, thank you. Coming up, we hear from the city about the problem and the answers when we take it to the trapezoid. Glasses and contacts, you need them to see, but they put such a strain on your life. Due to new advances in vision improvement technology, LASIK is now affordable for almost everyone with procedures starting as low as $299 per eye. And over 1 million procedures performed by our trusted independent surgeons, LASIK surgery is a sensible, safe, and affordable solution to improve your vision. So call now to talk to a LASIK Vision Institute counselor and schedule your free evaluation. 1-800-813-0109. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Everything all right? Actually, you know how Tom had knee surgery? Sure. We found out Brad's been taking his painkillers. It turns out he's been doing it for a while. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org.
I am the resident district manager on the FAU campus for Chartwell. Whenever I see Haley, I do not see a person with a disability. I see a person with extraordinary abilities. Haley is always smiling, she's always on time, she gives fantastic customer service, and is always focused on any job that she's given. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. Cool Florida products to take to college to deck out a dorm room, plus summer skin cleansers and the rosemary in the kitchen. Tomorrow at 4 on Suncoast View. Welcome back. Why are Venice firefighters being forced to work in a building that is literally falling apart? It is not like Fire Station 1 is located in a remote part of town, out of sight, out of mind. It's on the same piece of property as City Hall. As Christopher Brantley just showed us, firefighters are being forced to work in a building with holes in the roof, mold from a shoddy AC unit, and rusted doors that can't even open or close. So does the city fix up a building that's falling apart or build a new fire station somewhere else, perhaps leading to longer response times? In any case, where will the money come from? And joining us for more is Assistant City Manager Len Bramble and our intrepid South County reporter, Christopher Bramble. Christopher Bramble. <laughs> Brantley. <laughs> Thank Close you. enough. <laughs> uh, Christopher, um, the city has set aside a million dollars in the short term for what? Basically, it's a, a, a million dollars to emergency repairs, is, is I believe the way it's phrased. And that is if the roof does come collapsing down, that million dollars could put a new roof on it. And that also covers other parts of the fire department as well, anything else that needs to be replaced. Uh, Lynn, the obvious question that people who are watching this might want to ask is, why would you put a million dollars into a building that you're going to have to replace really soon? Well, we need to be sure this current building is in suitable condition for the du duration of its use uh, until another uh, building or replacement for this one might be determined. And have you basically, you know, do you have a game plan in terms of what needs to be fixed first? Uh, certainly our, our public works uh, director, John Veneziano, who I know Chris has spoken with, um, is developing that game plan and prioritizing the items that we need to give uh, an appropriate level of attention to in order to get this building back in a suitable level of operation. Christopher, why has this gone on for so long? Well, you know, the, the, it's a lack of money, really, is what it is. And, and that uh, assessment that John Veneziano and the Public Works Department had done uh, was a, an assessment for all of the buildings that include City Hall, that includes all of the buildings the city owns. The worst one thus far is this Fire Station 1. It's just fallen out of out of whack because there's been no money to, to fix it up over all of these years. I mean, the budgets have been that tight for so long that uh, there was no capital plan able to be put into place to re replace this building before this stage? Yes. Short answer is yes. That's correct. Um, uh, you, a lot of people don't remember, but during the recession, which was not that long ago, the city cut a third of its workforce just to... Uh, just to keep, to keep pace uh, with everything. So we had to, we've cut a lot of costs, uh, but now we're, we're feeling the effect of, of those lean years uh, with the condition of some of our capital assets just like this. Christopher, what is the attitude in Venice right now in terms of paying for this? Do you get the sense that residents, citizens would be good with paying a little bit more in terms of taxes to get a new you know, firehouse for their firefighters, or uh, do they want the you know, the city to find somewhere in the budget to pay for this. If we learned anything in the last election in November, we learned that the taxpayers are willing to spend money because they did approve two bonds for a new public safety center for the police department and for a road bond. So the, the taxpayers seem to be willing to pay for things. And it's really hard for anyone to really argue against giving money to first responders. These firefighters are working in a difficult building, but they themselves are fantastic first responders, and I believe everyone just about believes they should have a good place to you know, work. Lynn, as you talk to your colleagues from other communities, have many of them been faced with the same kind of situations that because of the Great Recession, uh, some of these, these capital projects have had to be put off for this long a time, leading to circumstances like this? Absolutely. It's something that's uh, very difficult and challenging for local government uh, when the resources just aren't there. Uh, you have to you have to curb costs and, uh, uh, and expenses of renovations like this are some of the good examples of those costs that get 
get uh, postponed or, or just not done. And, and, and how has the fire department and, and the staff and the firefighters, the guys who, who answer those calls every day and every night, how have they dealt with this kind of situation uh, knowing what the facts are? I think they, personally, I feel like they dealt with it exceedingly well. Uh, uh, the, the conditions that I've, I've seen over at Fire Station 1 are conditions that a lot of people would say are deplorable. I commend them for putting up with those conditions, but we really uh, rightfully need to do some things to, to correct those current deficiencies uh, and make it a, a suitable place to work. All right. We are just getting started with our discussion, and we will continue. We'll have more on the Firehouse 1 from our guests in a moment, right after we check the weather. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. Consumer Cellular makes it easy to stay in touch with family and stay within our budget. Now our cell phone bill is only a fraction of what it used to be. Our average customers get everything they need for about $25 a month, and plans start at only $10 a month with no contracts. Consumer Cellular has a great choice of phones. Check out my new one. I picked this simple phone. I use my son's old smartphone. Kept my number, too. Consumer Cellular has been an approved AARP provider since 2008, and members get exclusive discounts. It's a good thing Consumer Cellular is always there, because sometimes I need a little help. Sometimes. We're proud to have received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service among non-contract wireless providers. Over the years, we've seen a lot of change. We actually use change. Luckily, there are some things we can still afford. Like Consumer Cellular. Cellular. Stop paying too much for wireless service. Switch now, and for a limited time, get a $20 credit on any new line of service. Call 1-800-920-3084. Go online or visit a Target store today. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate or shop at Goodwill, I'm creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC7, your Suncoast News. Being tired all the time is not improved by rest. We'll have details in our HealthSmart report. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Our discussion about the deteriorating fire station one in Venice continues in a moment, but right now let's get a check on the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Thanks, Alan. I'll tell you, we were watching uh, the wave action pretty high here. This is a review since 2 o'clock this afternoon. We mentioned those rip current advisories, which are in effect until 10 o'clock tonight as a result of this trough of low pressure. You can see those waves acting up even offshore about 20, 30 yards, and that indicates some uh, pretty significant uh, uh, potential, at least, to four the uh, rip currents and you see the wave action too has been increasing throughout the afternoon as it makes its way toward the west coast of Florida. Now the weather headlines read like this. You see that line of clouds and showers all the way out into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, it's impossible. Uh, right now South Sarasota seems to be the area that's getting the heavy rainfall. There's no flooding yet, but uh, the ground's so saturated from our tropical system Emily that uh, we could get some localized street flooding, some heavy rain possible through this evening in isolated areas. Not everyone's going to get the rain. You have to keep an eye on your radar uh, as you look at your uh, My Sun Coast weather app, it will tell you. And a little drier on Friday, it looks like. A little drier air will settle in just for a day, and then things will start to moisten up again for the weekend. But look at the showers and storms. Uh, they're not all that strong out there, but uh, there is some potential for redevelopment through the evening as we make our way through time. Right now, not much rain at all in Manatee County. Most of Sarasota pretty dry right now. There's one lone shower producing some moderate rain near Northport, but more storms offshore starting to roll in our direction. So we'll keep that rain forecast fairly high throughout the evening at about 50% for
for some showers and a few thunderstorms with some breaks occasionally. So this is not going to be an all night rain event, but nonetheless, we will see a few of those uh, showers around, mainly showers, not a lot of thunderstorm activity. Look at this. We just missed this heavy rainfall today, five inches uh, just to the north of Pasco County there. And with all the moisture in play here, we're going to keep the rain chances fairly high right through Thursday. I mentioned Friday, maybe a little drier air just in time for music on Main at Lakewood Ranch. And 79 degrees right now, some light rain falling at the Sarasota Bradian Airport. And as far as the heat index, index goes, it's not a factor because of the clouds and showers. Humidity at 90%. Pressure actually rising 30.09 inches, and that's a good sign. 88 degrees the high today, a couple degrees below the average of 90, the record 96 set back in 2014. And we had nearly two tenths of an inch of rain at the Sarasota Bradian Airport. Our monthly and yearly total pretty much right on spot as far as that goes. 78 in Jacksonville, the same in Orlando, 10 degrees warmer now in Miami. And the forecast looks like this as far as this particular model goes. More showers and storms mainly to the north, but still a fair amount of light to moderate precipitation in the morning on Thursday and then continuing maybe to intensify somewhat by Tuesday afternoon and then the clouds will stick around. Now the National Satellite Review showing uh, another system moving through the northern plain states that could be rather active tonight. A few light rain showers from Tennessee through Ohio and all the way up into New York and Vermont, New Hampshire. Temperatures in the northeast cooler 70 in Boston right now 72 in New York 81 in Pittsburgh and Detroit at 74 degrees. It's hot out west 98 in Salt Lake City Reno at 96 and Phoenix at 106, 81 in Dallas, and 75 now into Houston, a bit cooler in Jacksonville. For boaters tomorrow, winds will be out of the south to southwest. It shouldn't be all that strong, but there will be near the individual uh, thunderstorms that may be out there. A light chop on the bays and inland waters. The water temperature now at 87 degrees, and the UV index a little lower at 7 due to the increased cloud cover. Well, the high tide at 12.01 tonight, and the forecast tonight, scattered showers, a few thunderstorms. Partly cloudy, otherwise 78 for your low. And then tomorrow, we'll do it all over again. 50% chance for scattered storms, a high near 89. And southwest winds will continue. The extended forecast, rain chance drops a little bit on Friday, picks back up over the weekend, and stays that way through midweek next week. Alan will be back with his guests right after this. Stick around. This is an important medical announcement. Xeralto and Pradoxa have been linked to uncontrollable bleeding and even death. If you've been prescribed one of these drugs and have experienced these dangerous side effects, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that Pradoxa can cause more heart attacks than warfarin, and other countries have already issued safety warnings against this drug. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to Pradoxa victims, and thousands of Xarelto victims are filing their legal cases. Call the Drug Watch hotline. If you or a loved one used Xeralto or Pradoxa and experienced uncontrollable bleeding, brain hemorrhage, or even death, you must call now. Call 800-793-6055. 800-793-6055. Call to see if you qualify to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan right now. At Humana, we believe great things are ahead of you when you start with healthy. And part of staying healthy means choosing the right Medicare plan. Humana can help. With original Medicare, you're covered for hospital stays and doctor office visits when you're sick, but keep in mind, you'll have to pay a deductible for each. A Medicare supplement plan can cover your deductibles and coinsurance, but you may pay higher premiums than you do with other plans. And prescription drug coverage isn't included. But with an all-in-one Humana Medicare Advantage plan, you could get all that coverage plus Part D prescription drug benefits, all for an affordable monthly plan premium, and in some areas, no plan premium. It's all described in this free book and DVD. Call for yours and discover how an all-in-one Medicare Advantage plan from Humana could save you money. Call 1-844-328-2700. Looking for something fun to do on a Friday night? Then come to Music on Main, the first Friday of every month at Lakewood Ranch. Enjoy free live music, dancing, great food, and lots of fun for every family member, even the furry ones. Meet up with friends, enjoy activities for the kids, or make it a special date night. And be sure to stop by the ABC7 booth and say hello. Mark your calendars for Music on Main, first Friday of the month, 6 to 9 at Lakewood Ranch. Brought to you by ABC7 and these sponsors. 
Welcome back. Right now, firefighters in Venice are being forced to work in some pretty deplorable conditions. A moldy fire station with broken AC and holes in the roof. What's the plan and where will the money come from to do something about it? And joining us is Assistant City Manager Len Bramble and ABC7 South County reporter Christopher Brantley. So let's talk about uh, what the alternatives here. One uh, idea that is being kicked around is the city buying the old classic steakhouse, which apparently went out of business recently, uh, which the mayor believes that the, the city could get a good deal on. Len, where does that stand? The mayor might be right. We might get a good deal on it, but I don't know. I look at that as, like, as any potential site on which to rebuild Fire Station 1. They're all going to have pros and cons. Uh, that one will, as will uh, the current site of Fire Station 1. We need to they all need to go through a uh, due process, be properly evaluated for response time, the ability to enter and, and exit. Right, and I wanted to get to response time in a second, uh, but <clears throat> on, on the downside of that side, I, apparently it, it's pretty small, and the question is whether it could accommodate a, a, a fire station that is large enough to serve the city. Certainly, and it's a busy, high-traffic area. It's just off of the Venice Avenue Bridge uh, and Venice Avenue and 41. And that's a, it's a tight space. So, you know, put a building in there, then you have to have a room for a, you know, a 100-foot ladder truck to be able to make a full swing around to pull into a garage because you don't want them backing in. And you'd have to have them pulling out in traffic all the time. And it's just, that would be a, a complicated spot for them. There are certainly a few other alternatives. Uh, the other alternatives include uh, building a new fire station out near Venice Airport. What is the, the pro and con of that? Uh, while land, more land might be available there than other locations, that's not centrally located to the, the rest of the island, uh, the, the center of the residential and commercial community. So that would hamper some, some of the responses. We're, so we're, we're talking about a, a difference in response time. Has any, you know, what, what are we talking about in terms of your average response time from the current fire station to something that may be out near the airport? Well, you think a lot of uh, residential communities, it's spread out all across the island, but you have, of course, all of downtown just at the corridor of where this uh, current fire station is, and it's kind of like in the middle, really, of the island. So they can get to the south end of the island quickly if need be. They can get to the north end of the island quickly if need be, really right off of the main road off of Harbor Drive where they are now. So, Lynn, where is the process right now? What is the process, and how quickly will it go? Well, Funding, of course, is a big key. That's part of the process. But when it comes to site evaluation and selection, that'll, that'll be on a, a, on a separate a track uh, where we'll uh, enlist the aid of, of uh, others to help us properly evaluate all the identifiable alternative sites. So that'll be something that'll be coming up in the upcoming months. What is going on right now to try to figure out not only the cost, but where the money will come from? Well, a lot of the costs might, may be incurred, and if we, ha if we have to buy land that we don't currently own, uh, that'd be that's a huge cost and, and adds a lot to cost of, uh, of a fire station project uh, but um, uh, a lot of unanswered questions at this point that we'll have to work through to develop answer, answers to. In, in, including the funding source and Christopher yeah. what, are, what are folks talking about here would this be similar to the projects last year in, in terms of take, taking out bonding? It certainly could the city I, I don't believe there's any reason why the city couldn't ask for another bond mm -hmm. uh, you know for five six million dollars whatever they're going to specifically need for this of course they have to determine again how much they're going to need first uh, and uh, that will come with the are we going to buy other properties of course as Len said or are we going to level the building where it is you know now and rebuild there that of course has its own problems because right. it could well it could be several months before it could be a year I don't I'm not a contractor before the time that they level the building and you know there's a grand opening so where do you put a fire station in the meantime and while the building's being leveled, in that scenario, mm -hmm. we're going to have to operate out of somewhere temporarily. Uh, mm -hmm. So that, that would have to be determined as well. well in, in terms of, you know, you, you recovered from the Great Recession, I would imagine tax revenues have also recovered. So is, or does the city have more money uh, at its disposal for capital projects like this? Well, it's certainly better than it was in the recession. Um, those monies are generally, uh, there's about a year or more lag time before you realize the additional monies um, and, and ad valorem from growth, from new homes and things like that before you start seeing the... the those well, of course, we have tax. so many homes being built right now, yeah. so that could increase over the years. It, 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 it will. Mm -hmm. And, and it let will. me bring up a, a difficult issue because there was discussion in the past about merging the fire department with the county. Um, 
how would things have been different if that went through in, in terms of having the funds available to build a new fire station? Uh, from everything that I've covered in that story, I don't think anything would be different because as I understand it, and please stop me if I'm wrong, Len, uh, the county did not want to take over the fire department without the city of Venice putting a whole lot of money into it to kind of fix it up a bit. Because you can imagine the county doesn't want to take on this asset uh, you know, that is going to cost them millions and millions of dollars to rebuild or to do something of that effect. So there was no easy answers here? No easy answers. We wish there were. And, there are never easy answers. And I, do you know what the, uh, you know, basically the, 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 the temperature is among the, the, the city council in, in, in terms of, of uh, does everybody recognize that this is a project that has to be done and it has to be done pretty soon? I've spoken to almost all but, all but one of them um, in, in passing over the last several times we've done the stories. Um, and everybody seems to be in agreement that, of course, something needs to be done, whether it's rebuilding or, or you know, fixing the current building and remodeling it. That, of course, is, is undetermined. But I think everybody certainly wants to keep a fire station on the island because, of course, it is, again, an island, three bridges. So, you know, you can't have a, a fire trucks having to come and go with bridges that go up, you know, every 20 minutes or, or, or however often. But so often when we do stories like this, uh, there are, will be people who are, w will write on Facebook, and they're probably doing so right about now, <laughs> saying the city has to live within its means and find the fat in the city budget and take the money from there. Uh, Len, what would you say to those folks? Uh, the money is really not there in the city budget today to, to rebuild fire st station one, to build a new fire station. We, we're going to have to, to, to uh, we're going to have to look for the adequate monies in order to do that. Is it possible to say what the impact of having the fire station in its current condition is having on fire services in Venice? I will say that I have now not heard any complaint of, of wait times or, or anything like that. I personally have not. Um, I, as I said before, our fire, fire department is fantastic. They do a, a wonderful job, um, and, and I, I haven't heard any specific complaints. And, and Len, you know, that you mentioned before that you, know, you also have equipment, very expensive equipment, that needs to be protected there, and obviously a leaky roof on uh, fire trucks that costs millions of dollars is not a good thing here. I would imagine that pays a, a big part in terms of, of the immediacy of, of taking care of this, let alone the fact that you have, you know, you know firefighters who do a heroic job that uh, deserve better. I agree completely on both of those counts. Um, we need to do a better job of protecting our equipment and our firefighters uh, uh, as they serve the public in the heroic way that, that they do. And so. the 100-foot ladder truck, which is very expensive, over a million dollars, that parks there. And the brand new fire truck, which was about a half a million dollars yep, or so, right. that also parks there, along with one of Sarasota County's ambulances, mm -hmm. which are also expensive. Okay, let's take a quick break, and we'll be back with final thoughts in just a moment. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, Contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction, Hope, and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 1-800-764-8708. That's 1-800-764-8708.
You studied hard, went to college, and achieved your dream, but it turned into a financial nightmare. If you have federal student loans and you'd like to reduce your payments, get more time, or have your loans completely eliminated, then we have good news. With one call to Student Loan Relief Services, you can find support and guidance. We've already helped thousands of people, and we can help you too. If you have $10,000 or more in federal student loans, you can qualify for payment extensions, payment reductions, or you may qualify to have your federal student loan completely forgiven. Call Student Loan Relief Services now to find out about your options. Take control of your finances and get out from under this burden. One of our student loan experts has the answers to your questions and great solutions to ease your financial burden. We're here for you. Call Student Loan Relief Services now. Call 800-759-0203, 800-759-0203. Check out mysuncoast.com slash dining, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. So what is the plan to repair or replace fire station number one in Venice, which is falling apart, and where will the money come from? Our guest joining us right now for a final thoughts. So, uh, Len, again, where do we stand, and, and why is it important for the city to, one way or the other, figure out whether to re rebuild it on its current site or nearby or move someplace else? Well, uh, to, to try and answer that, I think first and foremost, we need to fix the, the biggest problems with the current building. And then, then um, with the uh, 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 input from our council and direction from our council, we need to uh, evaluate all the potential sites and move forward with that process if the decision is to replace Fire Station 1. Uh, play the part of a triage physician right now. Mm -hmm. What is your understanding in terms of what needs to be done first? But, Things like the roof. the roof. The roof is in deplorable condition. The parts of the ceiling are. There's been deterioration to the walls. It's, it's a 43-year-old building. And uh, with this had precious little uh, attention, certainly in a renovation, given to it. And it's high time that we do those things and, uh, and give it uh, a reasonable life expectancy while we're working to replace it. Christopher, this has been a story that you've said that you've been covering for a long time. I, are you sometimes amazed that it's taken this long and still longer to do anything about it? I'm amazed that when I first went down there and did my first story about two and a half-ish years ago um, about this hole that we, we showed in the story, this hole in the roof, when I was back there, you know, a week ago shooting this story, the hole was still there. I mean, in exactly the same way, and that's why we showed the video. I'm, I, was, I was very surprised that that is still there, and I was very surprised to see, you know, in a kind of a cloudy, overcast day, you're seeing light come through, you know, the roof, so you're seeing there's clearly opening. Uh, aside from your reporting on this, has this gotten enough attention down there? I think it has a ton of attention right now. I mean, the city council is considering putting an impact fee just for the fire department itself to fix things up. Uh, that is still in the works. So I think a lot of people know about these issues. They just lack the money to throw at them to fix them. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of our viewers are saying about last night's topic, stagnant middle class wages. President Trump tweeting this week, highest stock market ever, best economic numbers in years, unemployment lowest in 17 years, wages rising. All true, but wages only rose about a pathetic 1.2% over the last year. The chief economist for Glassdoor is saying the fact is that economic gains are not being distributed evenly among workers. Anna on Facebook says housing has risen 60 to 75 percent since 2005 but wages have stayed the same or cut in some sectors just to keep your job it is too unaffordable to even live anymore K adds we still need to see wages in mid-level jobs improve as well as creation of more jobs with health benefits and Davian says Obama had eight years Trump has done more in six months than he did in eight years Someone said stock market only helps the rich or 99%. Really, where do you think your 401k is invested? Get a skill if you want a raise. And less responds. A lot of good high-performing stock market is doing for people working and trying to survive financially. We're all in this together, lashing out and turning this into a wrestling match is only going to cause greater division. Well, if you'd like to join the conversation on tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at 7. And FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, 
and Roku. When we return, we'll have a final look at your weather, plus an update on the growing tensions between North Korea and the United States. More on that coming up in your primetime headlines after the break. Are you currently on Medicare? In other words, do you carry the red, white, and blue Medicare card? If so, are you suffering from chronic back pain? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a pain-relieving back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost, shipped directly to your home for free. These medical-grade back braces are ideal for lower back pain, arthritis, spinal disorders, and other chronic back problems. Our accredited staff will handle all of the Medicare paperwork for free. And best of all, your brace is shipped directly to your home for free. Don't let chronic lower back pain slow you down. Get moving and stay active with a medical-grade back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost. We also accept Blue Cross Blue Shield, United Healthcare, Aetna, Humana, and other insurance. Will you qualify for a medical grade back brace covered by Medicare? Find out for free. Call Back Brace America at 1 800 715 0835. That's 1 800 715 0835. 1 800 715 0835. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $10 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received J.D. Power Awards for highest customer service. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. And now, for a limited time, get a $20 credit on any new line of service. Call 1-800-468-1930. Go to ConsumerCellular.com or visit a Target store today. Your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment, but right now let's get a final check on our forecast from Chief Meteorologist Bob Harry. Bob. Well, this is how it started off today. It's a tale of two different uh, scenarios, really, and this was in Venice, a nice sunrise, as you see right there, and then it finished like this. This is an ominous-looking photo sent in from Joe, and this is a Sunshine Skyway Bridge as the storms were starting to roll in right around 3 o'clock this afternoon. And looks like the storm's continuing in some places, although it's lessened in others. The Venice, the Van Ways, a webcam showing that rainfall right around 4:35 o'clock, and then skies clearing just a little bit. There's still ominous out there in the Gulf, and still quite a bit of rainfall out there. But the, sh the trend has been weakening storms now as we push through time. It's not to say that they can't redevelop, but we are looking at uh, some showers near Wachula, quiet in Manatee County, Northport. You've had a little bit of rainfall. Englewood has come to a rest right now. Uh, but as I alluded to, there's a little bit more rainfall to go. So we'll keep a chance for a few passing showers in the forecast through this evening. And then uh, they'll pick up again tomorrow, it looks like, as another piece of energy eventually works its way in our direction on Thursday. There's plenty of moisture in the atmosphere now. That dry air has since moved on and it won't be back until Friday. We'll start to see less activity on Friday. Forecast through this evening, though, calling for scattered showers and a possibility of a, th a thunderstorm or two. Not much. It will stay warm and muggy, though, right through the evening and the overnight. Low temperatures will be above average. Right now, it's 79 degrees and 76 on the dew point. That's high. Winds out of the south at 7. The pressure 30.09 inches. That's high pressure, and that's built in behind Emily, as Emily did bring the pressures down somewhat. The high temp temperature today, 88 degrees. That's 2 degrees shy of the normal, not close to the record, 96 set in 2014. This morning's low was pretty close to where it should be, and we had nearly two-tenths of an inch of rainfall at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport today. We're still a little bit below average, both on the monthly total and on the yearly total. Well, temperatures, you can tell where it's been raining a little bit. Jacksonville, Orlando, Sarasota, yes, some rain cool there there. Pensacola, 88, Tallahassee, 88, and the same now in Miami and 87 into Key West. The forecast model is calling this one a little bit more active to the north of us uh, through the overnight and during uh, the morning hours on Thursday. And you can see some of that light rain, though, entering into the picture at 8 a.m. So look for some showers around in the morning on Thursday. It won't be the most sunny of days, sunniest of days. We'll see a mixture of sun and clouds, though, at times. And then eventually uh, we have another little system that moves through in the afternoon. So better chances for some showers and thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon, too. Now, the national satellite and radar picture, there's nothing extreme at this point. We don't see anything too 
uh, terrible out there. This storm system in, in general could cause some rough weather into Minnesota and also on into Wisconsin later on tonight. Some light rain showers uh, moving through parts of uh, Kentucky and Ohio, all stretching up to New York right now. But cooler weather has really moved in over the Northeast. It's 72 in New York, Philadelphia at 70. Just to the south, though, nation's capital at 86. Detroit, you're at 74 and 86 in Denver. Now, Reno, 96, but Portland at 102 and 86 now in Oklahoma City, 81 in Dallas. Some of the places there in uh, Portland don't have air conditioning, in fact, and they got temperatures in the 100 degree range there. Columbia at 86 and Birmingham, Alabama, 82 degrees right now. The forecast, again, looking different for us. Uh, we're going to see some clouds around. You see all those clouds over the Gulf of Mexico. The good news is nothing concentrated around an area of low pressure. And what that means is we're not going to see a surprise storm like we did with Emily. And uh, Franklin, by the way, the next storm, the next named storm up, and that could be this area right here, a pretty, a pretty big uh, tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa. In about two or three days from now, that certainly could generate into our next tropical system. Well, for boaters tomorrow, the winds will be okay uh, outside of the storms that are around. Seas running two feet or less, a light chop out there. Water temperature 87, UV index will be rather low as a result of the increased cloud cover. And we'll look for the next tide, a high tide at just after midnight, another high tide at 942 tomorrow morning. Forecast, some scattered showers are possible, an isolated thunderstorm, not out of the question, but generally showers. And then tomorrow, variable clouds, some peaks of the sun, 89 for your high, so a little bit below average. 50-50 chance at showers and storms scattered about. Rain chance slides down a little bit on Friday, just in time for music on Main at Lakewood Ranch. And then weekend, showers scattered about both Saturday and Sunday. Al will be back with primetime headlines right after this. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy, and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800-738-9812. 800-738-9812. Go fish! In your face, in your face, in your it only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Now the primetime headlines and the latest developments out of North Korea where a ballistic missile last week came dangerously close to crossing paths with a commercial airliner. And early this morning, the U.S. conducted its own missile test in California. ABC's Emily Rao reports from Washington. Overnight, the U.S. launched an unarmed Minuteman III missile from Vandenberg Air Base near Los Angeles. The planned test, carefully calculated and far from flight paths or sea lanes, a sharp contrast from North Korea's recent intercontinental ballistic missile test. 
The missile launched 2,300 miles straight into space, right in the middle of commercial flight paths. As the missile descended, an Air France 777 with 323 people on board traveling from Tokyo to Paris flying in the same area. Less than 10 minutes after the plane passed, the missile fell to Earth, landing in the waters near the same spot the Air France plane had just flown by. The crew of this plane had no idea that they were in danger because the missile was coming in from outer space. In a statement to ABC News, Air France said the flight operated without any reported incident and that the airline constantly analyzes potentially dangerous flyover zones and adapts its flight plans accordingly. But the Pentagon says North Korea's missile launches are done with no coordination. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson now offering reassurance to North Korea along with a warning. We're trying to convey to the North Koreans, we are not your enemy, we're not your threat, but you are presenting an unacceptable threat to us. The Air Force says its missile launch overnight was not a direct response to recent provocative tests from North Korea, but that it does demonstrate the U.S. is prepared and ready if tensions continue to escalate. Emily Rao, ABC News, Washington. Turning now to a fatal explosion at a school building which collapsed. One person was killed and seven others hurt after a natural gas explosion shook a school at Minnehaha Academy in Minneapolis. Police say contractors doing work at the Minnehaha Academy ruptured a gas line causing the explosion. The blast caused part of the building to collapse. Family members say Ruth Berg, a business office assistant at the school, was killed. One person is still missing. All students have been accounted for. One of President Trump's favorite issues is illegal immigration. Now he plans to go after legal immigration, too. The president is following through on his campaign promise to cut the number of legal immigrants into the U.S. by 50 percent over 10 years. A bill to eliminate diversity lottery visas and limit the number of refugees offered permanent residency in the country each year. This competitive application process will favor applicants who can speak English, financially support themselves and their families, and demonstrate skills that will contribute to our economy. They're not going to come in and just immediately go and collect welfare. That doesn't happen under the RAISE Act. They can't do that. According to the Department of Homeland Security, over a million immigrants gained permanent residency in the United States in 2015. We now turn to a frightening video of a police officer being hit by a car while on a routine traffic stop. Texas police, Texas police officer Matt Lessel's dash cam shows him walking up to a car right after he approached the driver's side window. A vehicle slams into him from behind. The driver was allegedly drunk. Amazingly, the officer is okay. He called for backup. The suspect was arrested and charged with intoxicated assault. Officer Lessel is, officer Lessel is recovering from a hyperextended foot and broken vertebra. And that's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us and have a great night.